So I'm going to give you guys a story. So I want to say this was approximately, let us let me take a guess. This is approximately, um, this was before I was a grandmaster. So I think this would have been about 18 to 19 years ago um, when I was an international master. So I was playing on this website at the time called the Internet Chess Club. It was a very prominent chess site. Um, so I was playing on it, and, um, and there was this period where what I would do is I was actually... Uh, no matter what the position was from the start of the game, every single move, I would offer a draw. So I would hit draw on move one, draw on move two, draw on move three, draw on move four, literally offer a draw every single move regardless of the position. Um, and, and after I want to say maybe two or three days of doing this, um, one of the administrators basically uh, banned my, didn't ban my account, but they blocked me from playing ranked games. So um, so what can I say? XUC, the guy, he's, he's, he's got good taste. He learned from the best. So you can tell that he's going to go very far in chess. And hello everybody, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Sorry I cut the sh song short, decided to come come live a little bit early. How are you guys doing? Hope you're having a fantastic uh, Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, Monday morning, wherever you guys are. Um, I think everything is good. Uh, Alright, whoa, um, whoa, holy mackerel, thank you to Myth for the host with 9,005 viewers right on cue, right as we come off the waiting screen. Thank you so much to Myth, appreciate it. So you guys, we are going to be doing some analysis of the game state played by Mr. XQCOW1 in Pag Chomps or Pog Champs earlier today. Now I do know Myth um, has probably one of the best impersonations of um, of XQC that I've seen so far. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have clips or anything, but I have seen it, and it is by far and away the best um, the best uh, impersonation that I've seen um, by by another streamer of XQC. So. Um, let me turn the music down just a little bit, you guys, just a touch. That should be better. Um, again, thank you so much to Myth. Big shout out to everybody who's watching, everyone who's a fan of TSM. Um, I, I know that, um, uh, who's, he was watching, he was playing the Sentinels play against Envy, I think it was. Um, I haven't been following super closely, uh, how TSM has been doing in Valorant. Um, but of course, everyone who is a TSM fan, they are going to Worlds tomorrow, or not tomorrow, sorry. They're going to Worlds, um, after their performance yesterday, uh, when they finally beat Cloud9, um, uh, for the first time in seven years. Again, you guys, a big part of what, why I joined TSM. I wanted to be part of a winning team. I didn't want to join someone like, you know, one, one of those other orgs, which is tweeting about, you know, Magnus or any of that stuff. So, um, so obviously, I clearly made the right choice. Um, anyway, you guys. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm trying to get into the spirit. As you guys know, there was a little bit of um, some some drama when uh, when when uh, XUC made this comment the other day about TSM. So I'm trying to get more into the spirit and have more fun with all of this. Um, so so yeah. All right, uh, <laughs> but did you? Yeah. So okay, you guys. Um, Anyway, we're gonna be going over XUC's games today from Pog Champs. Uh, I was I was on the road driving back from the from the desert um, during these games, so I didn't look at them very closely. But we will go over the games. Hikaru with the boomer trash talk. I'm not. I don't know. I'm. I'm not. I'm, I mean, I just joined TSM, but I feel like I should get more in the spirit of it. Um, all right, TSM beat C9. Yes, they did. Uh, I think C9 had won what like seven years in a row or something. So. Um, Really, really great to see again. Thank you so much to Myth. Appreciate it. I, we're now both part of TSM. I'd love to. Um, I would love to uh, give TS, not give TSM. I'm sorry, give Myth a um, a chess lesson or give do some kind of collaboration down the road. Whether it's chess, whether it's something like uh, Valorant or Fortnite or, or any of the FPS. Totally, um, I, I'd love to. What does TSM stand for? T stands for Team Solo Mid. Uh, their origins, of course, coming from League of Legends. See, yeah, I know they went they went to World seven years in a row. They did not win finals. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, I, I feel like it seems like that's one thing that's very different with, like, if you look at, um, I mean, Valorant, they haven't really had a World Championship yet. But if you look at, like, League or you look at some of the older games like StarCraft and, and so forth, um, of course, the, the Asian teams, like T1 specifically, tend to dominate. So, um, of course, uh, of course, you know, times change. And that's one thing with Chess that is a little bit different, I would say, is that, um, the China is becoming very strong in the game of chess, I must say, but they're not at the top yet. So, all right. Um, without further ado, let's take a look at at, um, at XUC's games against Hafu today. So, okay. So we'll take a look at it from which side, chat? White side or black side? XUC's point of view or it's Hafu's point of view? Which POV do we want? Winner POV or um, or XUC POV? Which one? XUC POV. Okay. All right. Let's let's rotate. Um, 
All right, so okay, you guys. So we'll start with this game. So first move was pawn to e4, xqc responds pawn e5, knight f3, knight to c6, bishop c4, xqc plays knight f6. Um, better would have been to bring this bishop out because by by um by bringing this knight out right away. Actually, let me stop the music. It's a little bit too loud for me. Let me or actually no, I'll play it. I'll just turn it down on my end. Um, one second. All right, so um. Okay, so normally black should play bishop to c5 here rather than knight f6. Am I a chess pro? Yes, you guys. So I am signed with TSM as a chess player. So let me, just to, just to show you guys, I'm the only player who is a chess player on TSM right now, but I am a chess player. I did, let me go to their teams. Okay, I'll pop this up very briefly before we get into all the analysis. Um, so as I scroll over, you guys see this little king. Um, it's a little loud here, not bad, just distracting. I think the sound is good. I'll, I'll double check. Let me make sure. Um... Let me make sure. Anyway, you guys see there is the king over here. Um, I didn't know you play chess. Yes. Um, you'll see here I am. Uh, I'm on the main roster for the chess king. So for chess. Um, it's a little bit loud. Okay, I can play around with it. Also, I would like to add you guys. This is my sort of the one stream I'm going to do every week. I'll try to do it every Sunday, at least for the next couple of months until I decide to move to California um, permanently. And, um, and this is going to be my special stream for the West Coast fans and all the fans from the land down under, the people... People also from Hawaii as well. I, I would add one thing that's funny is uh, I picked up a rental car for the next month. And um, the rental car does not have California plates. It has Hawaii plates. So this is a stream dedicated to everybody um, on the West Coast. All my fans on the West Coast. All my fans uh, in Australia and, and Asia. And, um, and of course, all my, all my fans from all the great seven islands of Hawaii. So, yeah. So I am, I am, uh, I am a chess player uh, representing TSM. So as you see the king and here I am. All right, you guys. So let's get back to the um, let's get back to the chess. So knight f6. XUC should have played bishop c5 here. Um, knight f6 is okay, but the problem is after knight g5, d5, pawn takes knight d5. Uh, Hafu is a very strong move here, which would have won her the game. Ironically enough, on move six, she went XUC would not have been checkmated, but he probably would have lost very shortly thereafter. Um, which is this move, knight takes pawn. So you think white gambit the knight for a pawn, um, and you lose a knight for one pawn, so it's a three for one. But the problem is um, that in this position, white can play queen f3, king to e6, knight c3. And this variation is called, um, since I see someone says I'm from Italy, I believe the technical term of this opening it comes from Italian. Um, let me turn the music down one smidgen. Um, okay, I think it's better now. Um, this opening is called, il, um, what's it called? Il fegato um, fried. Uh, what, what is it called? It's... Um, it's uh, I, f I forget the exact 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 wording in Italian, um, but it's like it's like il fegato some it's um it's 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 basically called uh it's it's called fried liver yeah it's called it's called uh fegato I believe is um is liver in Italian it's like il fegato um fritto maybe I I don't know what fried is fegato yeah but it's not fritto in in ancient in ancient Italian when this language was or not language when this opening was created like a few hundred years ago. It wasn't frito. It was a different. It was a different word, I believe. But anyway, this opening is called the fried liver in 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 American language, which we which most of us speak here on the West Coast. Um, so this is the fried liver variation. Uh, white gambit's a knight here very early. One, two, three. But there's a lot of pressure in the center. You have three pieces attacking the pawn, attacking the knight, and attacking the king on e6. And after knight e7, white can castle or play d4 first. Both moves are very good. And it's probably winning. Uh, ah, fegatello, yeah, fegatello, right? Because it's not, it's not like it, it's a little, the translation is slightly different. So yeah, in Italian, it's called the fegatello attack, um, which of course means like fried, fried liver. Um, so so yeah, this is very, very good for white. I think Hafu probably prepared this opening variation, but at the end of the day, she did not quite remember it, so she didn't, she didn't actually play this. Instead, um, instead, what she did was she played queen f3, trying to play the same line but confusing the move order. Um, how was the PCT he car I threw hiked in 2019? What section did, you, did I hike? Well, as I told you guys, um, every weekend I drive out to the Mojave Desert to specifically to the town of Ridgecrest, California, where my grandmother is um, and my mother is. And so um, drove, I, I want to say, like 20 miles outside and, um, and was on the PCT there. I have a picture that I might show later. Uh, it was a pretty eventful hike, though. It was only like, it was, it was only like three, miles, uh, three miles each way, so about, you know, just a casual six-mile hike. Um, but 
there were a couple things that occurred. So on the way back, um, I almost stepped on a rattlesnake. My mom and I were coming back on the trail. And I was very fortunate that I saw the rattle. I saw the rattle in the end of the tail on the trail. And I didn't step on it. Because if I had stepped on it, probably I would not be here right now. I probably would have gotten like, it would have jumped out and like bit me in the neck or something. And I'd probably be in the hospital or something along those lines. Um, so, uh, so luckily I saw it. So like we jumped right off the trail. Um, and one thing just to give you guys a little bit of snake background is when, when the rattlesnakes near you, um, if, if you start hearing the rattle sound that it makes, the, the, the rattle... Um, where it starts like this, this it starts rattling you should try to get away as fast as possible that is a warning sign so when it started doing that my mom and i just um we uh we just we, we got off the path and we we went went away very quickly yeah you, you can you can just see the headlines right you can see uh you can see uh, you can see professional fall guy streamer uh signs signs with tsm two days later dies by snake bite um that that's that you can just see the headline that would be uh that would of course be great um so <laughs> um yeah anyway uh that that's one way of putting it or or you know um yeah so <laughs> did it sound like it was behind you no it, was, it it went off into bushes on the side so um so it was a little bit different then the second part was that i saw something that was completely i think i'm almost certain is illegal so on our way back on the trail there was also some there was also a guy he was holding um he was he was holding he was holding a um he was holding a, a, a like a, a hunting rifle i don't know the exact make but there was a guy with a hunting rifle. I guess he was out hunting like bears or something. So uh, that was also pretty pretty wild. I think that's technically illegal, by the way. I think um, I don't believe that is legal technically, but whatever. So so there was that too. So it was a pretty uh, it was a pretty eventful day before I came back to um, before I came back here to uh, to Culver City. So <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. Um, anyway, okay, let's uh, let's keep going with the chess now. Uh, did I talk to the New York Times? Yes, I did an interview a couple days ago in in regards to joining um, joining TSM. All right, so okay, so Queen F3, Hapu confuses the order. XUC goes Bishop E6. A better move here would be Queen takes Knight. White should take with the Bishop, create this double threat towards the pawn, but also this double threat towards the Knight on C6. And in this position, Black is much better because you can play this move Knight D4 again at a Grandmaster level. A Grandmaster might find this move, um, but I would have expected XUC to find a move like Queen G6. Support the knight and support the pawn. So everything is kind of um, everything is kind of guarded here by the black queen in this position, and um, and it's 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 very very good. So so yeah. All right. Um. So so XCC does not do this. Instead, he plays bishop e6. Uh, Hafu plays bishop takes d5, which is not um, not a good move. Walk the trails with my mom. Very good boy. Um. I I love the outdoors, you guys. So I love going out hiking. Only thing I would say with hiking um, right now is that the, there's a lot of smoke. It's very smoky and hazy because of the wildfires in the area. So it's not as clear as, as you would like it to be. Um, so bishop e6 is played. Bishop takes d5. Now here xuc makes the blunder of the tournament so far. He plays queen takes knight. And the reason this is such a big blunder is because if xuc had played bishop takes bishop, he would have been very close to winning here in this position. Um, mainly because of what the bishop does is it protects the pawn it also hits the queen um and the queen guards everything so like right now you have two juicers under attack the queen hits the knight the bishop hits the pawn white's also not threatening because your bishop backwards defends uh the pawn as well so it's like the bishop is like it's like a sniper but it's like a sniper that's like what would it be it's like a sniper that you can shoot forward but it also can shoot backwards i mean i guess you don't that's not how snipe that's not how guns work um but that's basically how um how the bishop functions it's like it's like the sniper because it's it's aiming forward down the long diagonals, but it's also like it can, you also have like the dual, you also have it can scope behind as well. Um, so yeah, 360, no scope, right? Exactly. <laughs> right, okay. Um, all right, you guys, let's, let's try, let's try not to lose our minds. Um, so, so yeah, okay. So this would have been very good if XC had played this because after um, queen g3, you can go pawn to f6, you create the connect three here. Um, where the pawns support each other the bishop covers the squares so the knight goes back and now after pawn to e4 white has to move the knight back and after knight d4 this is completely winning for black white would have to go king d1 and after a very clean move like queen d7 and castling the white white has no development here look at all of these pieces they have not moved and they're on their original squares um so this was a big miss from xuc because the problem is after queen takes knight now white goes bishop takes knight and as you guys can see from the valuation bar it shoots up to where it says plus six points for white because now white is winning the game 
If you take the uh, bishop, white can take the pawn, and now it's a double attack on the queen and the, on the king and the rook, and um, and you have to move the king. You cannot castrol it because it's an illegal move since the king is in check. As you guys see, when I move it, you hear that. Eh, 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 eh. You can't castle the king because the king is currently in check. So you cannot castle the king here. Um, so you have to go bishop d7. Bishop takes bishop. King takes. Uh, now white <laughs> castles. Uh, XUC plays rook e8. <laughs> Hafu goes d4 here. Um, the point is that now the bishop hits the queen. It's a it's a fossilization of the queen. So you can't capture the free pawn. So you have to move the queen. Hafu checks. Takes the pawn. Very standard. Very good moves. XUC goes c6. Queen d4. Um, XUC plays c5. Another good move, stopping white from winning the pawn on the a7 square. So now queen g4. And now Hafu gets really dirty here, and she plays queen to g3, setting up a really nasty tactic. Now, normally here, you could also develop like the knight, move the bishop, uh, many different ways to play. She plays here. Bishop g5 is also um, another way to set up the tactic. But she goes here, and now XUC walks into the... Um, walks into the, the the attack here he plays queen takes pawn you think okay i get one pawn back and we trade the queens i'm doing well unfortunately white now goes bishop f4 which really kind of ends the game here now the problem is the queen and the king are stuck they're skewered so uh or the queen is pinned i should say to the king you can't move the queen out of the way because then you would lose your king um and uh there's you're just going to lose the queen because the queen supports and if you don't take white takes you can't move out of the way and so either way your whole queen is um is lost here bishop d6 is played hafu smurfing no i i mean what i would say with hafu and i think this is what i really love about the game of chess is in many ways it's um especially with a tournament like pog champs your result is a pure is almost purely a re reflection of the amount of work that you've put into the game of chess so xuc for example he is relatively new to the game in in general terms but he has played quite a bit so he's not the he's not he's not an absolute beginner um, but there are a couple players like Connor, for example, or Austin, who are very new to the game, literally having learned the rules, I believe, right before the event. So it's very, very, um, it's very, very hard when you're super new to the game um, to compete against some of these players. But then there are other people like Hafu, for example, who, um, who, who, uh, who she's just been grinding every day, um, and she's just, she's just on a roll. The only one smurfing is Wagamama. I would not say Wagamama is smurfing. The dude is just uh, watching a lot of high-level chess, but he's not playing a lot. Um, of chess so it, I, I think the work it's different because he's not playing but he's definitely uh been studying quite a bit um is the fact that scissors is going up against xqc kind of sad because scissors is quite good well you guys um i will talk about the brackets after i do my analysis so let's finish the analysis first and then get to that point um but but yeah i would say it's going to be very exciting to see what happens okay so bishop d6 played hafu takes the queen xqc takes um Queen f3, bishop b2. He's with he's with Austin and Connor with 1450 rating. You guys, the, the rating brackets were set up before the event. So um knight d2, bishop a1, rook a1. XUC correctly, I think, played rook e7. The idea he wanted to play was rook e8 and go for the patented ice skater on the back of the board um, with rook e1 or a back rank checkmate, as we call it. But now Hafu checks and plays a fantastic move, like a classy move. Pawn to h3. I'm commentating tomorrow, you guys. I'll be doing commentary tomorrow. I took the weekend off. Um Basically, as I've said before, I, uh, my plan is every weekend to try to go to the Mojave Desert and see my grandmother. Um, so I just decided to take Saturday and Sunday off. Um, so H3 played by uh, played by Hafu. Fantastic move. Creates Luft, as we as as those of you who speak German, um, I'm sure there aren't many of you because it's like it's uh, it's it's what 3 a.m. It's 3:20 a.m. in the Deutschland right now, but. Um, but anyway, yeah, like H3 and um, H3 and uh, and, and, and white creates what we call Luft or Lufthansa in German. So white wants to move the king to h2 here. Um, so now when black goes rook e8, there's no actual checkmate because the king just goes to h2 here. So, so Hoppe plays knight f3, also fine, not necessary, but a good move. Um, h6 played here. Uh, uh, queen c4, she lived there, now she's ill at the end of her life. Yeah, I mean, I can take a short break. I'll get back to the analysis in a second. What I will say, since I've talked about it many times... Um, you know, my grandmother, she's, she's lived a long life. She's lived in the Mojave Desert her whole life. Um, uh, and uh, she has, like, dementia. It's not eating much. So it's it's just a tough situation. But again, as as I, say, as, as I would say, you only have um, you only have this time to do what you can do. And um, 
uh, from having seen like her whole life in a way, like I, because my mom is cleaning up, cleaning up her house and all this sort of stuff, you sort of see like an accumulation of someone's whole life over the past, like past, you know, three quarters of a century, the last 75 years. And I think it puts it into perspective that really all you have, um, is time. Like that's all you have in this life. You've got your health and you've got time. Um, so you really should make the, make the best use of it. And so like for me, one of the ways that I really like it, like making use of it is giving back to you guys. Cause at the end of the day, what's going to happen? Like I can have all these trophies, I can have all, all these things, but you know, sort of streaming, giving joy to people and giving back will matter a lot more once, once, you know, I'm six feet under the ground. Um, so, all right. Okay. Let's keep going. So B6 played here. Uh, Hafu goes King F1, uh, play pawn to G5, rookie one, another excellent move by Hafu trading off the major forces in the game because now after rookie one knight e1 um white just has a queen and knight against one rook so it's uh it's um it's pretty much over here so a6 hafu takes she takes check takes check i mean pretty much the rest of the game doesn't need much to be said hafu correctly sacks the queen for uh for a rook one day will be hikaru and xcc's last room we won't even know it chat don't be don't be don't be don't be down let's uh let's chill uh, King f8, a6 is played here. Xuc goes h g4, a7 takes. White makes a queen. Um, King g6, queen g2, knight d3. Now this is all very, very good for for Hafu. The only thing is, don't allow stalemate. So c4, king e6, c5. Pretty standard. Just takes all the juicers off the board. Um, I'm not really going to comment much more. There was only one moment here which I thought was very good. Thank you to Fromso for the tier one. Uh, thank you to Nyquil Bandit for the four as well, which is that she tries to set up the, the ladder staircase with the queens going back. Um, and she sets it up, and then here, you have to be very careful because there are two squares that you move the queen to where it's a draw. If you go here, um, the king is stuck, so it's stalemate. The king has no squares to go to. If you go this way as well, it's also stalemate. The king is stuck. No squares to go to because this queen covers all of these ones. So um, that would be a draw. However, Hafu, correctly realizing there's some danger, goes king to g1, and now after king b1, she goes queen f1. Again, checkmate the, uh, again, the sort of the scissor lift, as XUC would call it, where one queen covers this whole rank where the king likes to come back to, and the other queen just threatens to capture the king, so it leads to a checkmate. Um, all right, so with this win, Hafu goes up 1-0 in the match. Um, so we will move on to the second game between XUC and Hafu. Um, so XUC starts with E4. Your speech inspired me to sub. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so E4 played here. XUC was offering a draw the whole time. Well, you know, you guys, XUC, he learned from the best. I'm not going to lie. I'll give you guys a short story before we get into this game. Um, thank you to Swimmy G for the four months. Thank you to Nyquil Banner for the four months. Thank you to Bits of String for the four months. Thank you to Harry Bump for the 400 biddies. Thank you to FIFA Snipe for the three months. Um, thank you to Tribe 277 for the two months. And New Ranch as well for the tier one. Okay, so we learned from the best. So I'm going to give you guys a story. So I want to say this was approximately, let us let me take a guess. This was approximately, um, this was before I was a grandmaster. So I think this would have been about 18 to 19 years ago um, when I was an international master. So I was playing on this website at the time called the Internet Chess Club. It was a very prominent chess site. Um, so I was playing on it, and, um, and there was this period where what I would do is I was actually... Uh, no matter what the position was from the start of the game, every single move, I would offer a draw. So I would hit draw on move one, draw on move two, draw on move three, draw on move four, literally offer a draw every single move regardless of the position. Um, and, and after I want to say maybe two or three days of doing this, um, one of the administrators basically uh, banned my, didn't ban my account, but they blocked me from playing ranked games. So um, so what can I say? XUC, the guy, he's, he's, he's got good taste. He learned from the best. So you can tell that he's going to go very far in chess. So, um, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's keep going. Um, all right. So XUC plays E4, uh, Hafu goes E6 playing the French defense or as XUC calls it, the surrender defense. Um, XUC plays knight of three D5, bishop D3. One thing that he likes to do pretty often is bring this bishop out against either the French defense or the Karo Khan defense. Um, knight F6, he plays queen E2, they trade. Queen e4, and now bishop c5. So pretty standard position. Here I would have liked to have seen xc go queen e5. Um, 
Uh, it's so frustrating to watch him play. He thinks so deeply about it. You never practice it. So it's a train wreck. I told you guys before, and I'll say it again. If XUC took, like, probably... I don't even know. Like, if he studied a little bit of openings and some patterns, I say if XUC put in three to four hours just, like, of, of like, working with me on, like, patterns and just, just having a basic opening setup, he would... I think he would be... I think he would be 1,100. I actually do. I think he'd be 1,100 because he's got very good instincts, but the problem is he thinks too long. He double clutches, and then everything goes goes completely wrong immediately. Um, so here he played b4, which, by the way, is not a bad move, but I would have liked queen e5 because you create a double threat. You hit the bishop, and you hit this pawn all at the same time. Um, so he goes b4, bishop d6, bishop b2. He's 600 in blitz. I'm saying 1,100 at rapid chess. Blitz chess is a whole different kettle of fish, you guys. Um, so bishop b2, again, very good move. Uh, activates the bishop on the long diagonal, threatens the pawn. Also, the queen in the center is very good as well. Um, one coach, XUC, again, I've offered to give XUC lessons. Um, I've offered... Uh, the two people that I've actually reached out to before the playoffs begin... Uh, excuse me. Um, the two people that I've reached out to are... Uh, is uh, is Forsen, the Forsen buys, and, um, and, of course, to XUC. So I've reached out to both of those guys. Um, Shroud... Well, since I think there still are some people coming from the from the host that I uh, the very generous host that I received from Myth earlier, I would love to do some sort of very small weekend event, something like one or two days with like Myth and Shroud for sure. So that's my dream. That would be the dream. Uh, that would be the dream thing, um, dream dream kind of event. So all right. So um, are you and XQC still talking? Yeah, totally, totally. You guys, it was blown out of proportion. Like what I would say is that like. Uh, this is going to be my final comment. I, I'm sure it's going to get clipped again, but uh, this will be my fin final comment on the topic. What I would say is that in terms of it, it was a misunderstanding. It was a misunderstanding on my on my part. I overreacted. I, I, I sort of misunderstood what he said, but then XUC sort of saw the clip and he thought that I'm like really, really angry at him. And I'm just like, and I'm, I'm, I, I blown it out though. Yeah, no, we both made mistakes. I would totally, I mean, that's just the reality. We both made mistakes. Um, But but yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, he, he did that, and I overreacted in a spur of the moment. I was tilted. I got, I got kind of annoyed in the moment, and then he thought, "Oh man, like he's really angry at me." And this is one thing that's like very hard, kind of. I don't know how to put this in perspective, but it's like I'm trying to. This is not like gonna. I'm trying not to sound like egotistical when I say this, but like there are a lot of people who kind of have a great respect for chess and like and a great respect for me. So it's like XUC, I think, is a little bit too like. He's like, he, I think he's very reverent of me in a sense, but then it's like, it's weird. Cause like, I also like, I have a ton of respect for XQC. And, and so like, I really like, I, 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 I mean, I do anything for the guy. He's just, he, he started this boom. So, um, so it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's just this like kind of, it got blown out of proportion. I, I mean, we both have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of, a lot of respect for each other. Um, so yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, okay. So let's, uh, let, let's, 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 Let's let's get back to the chess. So, because like it's like I think XUC probably is like he thinks he's a big streamer, but then like he's like, oh man, like he card, he's this, he's this huge chess guy. But then for me, it's like oh, I think the exact other way. It's like oh, I'm just this chess guy. But look at XUC, he's this really big, he's this really big streamer who I have a lot of respect for. So I think it's it's a very strange, strange kind of like equilibrium. It's, it's strange. It's like I like I think I'm just a chess player and I respect him a lot. I think he probably thinks like he's just a streamer, but he respects me like a lot. So it's just, it's just like kind of. It's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of odd in a way. You know, I I don't know if that makes sense, but but yeah, it's like it, it goes both ways. Um, so uh, yeah, but it's it's all good. It's it's all good. So anyway, f6 is played here. Um, so so now knight c3 is played. A6 is played. Um, xuc goes knight d5 again. Not a great move, but I think the idea is just to reroute the knight to a better square after c6 knight e3. Uh, I'll pop up a um. I'll pop up. I'll pop up a bracket. Yeah, I remember you saying XCC was my favorite streamer a long time before he came to your stream and helped chess grow. Yeah, I, I was. You know, I think I first came across XQC and um. Uh, thank you, Knight Thirty Four Andrew. I know you're trying to troll me, um, but you're completely wrong on that. One hundred percent wrong. Um. So what? Are, <laughs> the, the dichotomy of two well-known and respected people in their fields both not communicating well together. XD. Yeah, totally. Um. But I, I would say the first time that I came across XUC stream was during the original chess boom in November of 2018, when um when I mean when Byron specifically, who who of course I, I knew long before that as well, was like when I saw Byron and Forsen play, 
Uh, they they were both very big at the time, and then and then somewhere in there, I think XUC jumped into jumped into fray and was playing quite a bit too. So that was the first time that I that I came across uh, that I came across XUC. Um, so ninety three queen e seven bishop d four uh, bishop takes b four c three again probably what white should play here is pawn to a three create this pawn chain support the pawn and create art. So XUC I think said this a, a couple days ago as well where he said um. What he was aiming for was he, he he thought that when strong chess players played the game, somehow their pawns looked like art. And so I think if XCC tries to conceptualize that, where pawns try to make the pawns look like art, um, maybe he would play a move like a3 or you know a pawn like c3 uh, and create 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 the create the you know the um, create the you know the Sistine Sistine Chapel or um, or, or or the other art. Um, so Bishop d4 takes c3, Bishop c5, he trades knight d4, good move. Hits the pawn on e6. Here, Hafu plays queen e5. Not the best move here because when you play the queen here, you create these double pawns. And after knight to 3, knight to 7, white could have actually been, been doing quite well with knight to c4 here where he hits the pawn on e5. And um, and the bishop on c8 is pretty bad. It's locked in behind the wall of pawns. So there's no scope here. There's just no scope whatsoever with all these pawns in front of the bishop. Okay, so here, uh, XUC plays knight g4, a little bit dubious, but still okay, e4, knight g5. And here, Hafu plays knight f6, she does not play knight c5, which would have been uh, very, very strong here. Um, because what you do is you guard from the side, and now you can just kick this knight out of here, so it no longer attacks anything. Um, and instead, she plays knight f6, so XUC trades, takes the pawn, even material. Um, you belong in California, not in Florida, to be honest. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, you guys, down the road. As I as I think I said, I'm doing this sort of as a as a training run, sort of coming out as a test. Um, but uh, down the road, I, I may I may I may move to California. Late stream today, yes, you guys. So late stream because I feel that what I'm doing is most of my streams are very early. So if there are people who are in Australia or in Asia or on the West Coast specifically, it's a uh, it's very, it's very, it's very hard for them to watch my streams when I start streaming at 6 a.m. or like tomorrow when I'm streaming at 7 a.m. for example. Um, so it's hard for them to follow. So I feel like I, I owe it to the the people who um, who are on the West Coast or in these places where it's convenient to do it like do one stream that's really, really uh, that's that's really um, that's really cater some. So that's that's why I'm doing a late stream tonight. Um, but mind you, this is my late stream, and then I have to go to bed right away after the stream, so I'll have to be up. Uh, streaming at 7 a.m. local time tomorrow because we're doing a big we're doing a big sub battle as well. So okay, f5 played knight d6 here, king e7. Now here xc trades. He should have played knight c4. Um, and what he should have done here was put the knight in the center. What about the eu? All my other streams are very good for eu and for east coasters. Um, like literally, if I'm streaming at 7 a.m. local time, that will be uh that'll be 4 p.m. Eastern time in the afternoon tomorrow, you guys. So if you're an e if you're eu gang like. You get your you you can go sip your afternoon coffee you know get your get your espresso or take your take your siest um sorry take your uh take your siesta and um and then watch the stream so it's it's all good so XUC should have played knight c4 here um the reason he should have played knight c4 is because the idea is that you put the knight on e5 um and create a uh, create an outpost so let's say black pushes the pawn and you go here um. And after like king f6, you just go f4 and you plant the knight on e5 permanently. Pawn supports the knight. Bishop is on the wrong color, so it can't touch. It's on the light squares, and the rooks can't touch the knight or the pawn here either. Like let's say black goes here, you get some position like this. Then pawn supports the knight, so it's a perma, it's a perma support um, of the knight. EU people don't work in the afternoon. Well, without trying to offend people, I know that in um, in Barcelona and in most of Spain, um, people tend to tend to um, take the afternoons off. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, XUC plays knight c8, not the best move, but it's okay. Rook c8, rook b1. Idea to hit the pawn. Uh, this is an okay move already. It's an end game, so it's very, very hard to play. Uh, b5, what, XUC castles. What he should have done here was actually keep the king in the center because we're in an end game. So when you're in an end game and there are only rooks on the board, generally the king is an aggressive piece and you want to use it in the central part of the board um, rather than castling it out of the center. So he goes uh, castles. Now Hafu plays rook d8. Fantastic move. Um, probably better objectively was the other rook because now after d4, black can go c5. And black's rooks are on the right square as the tanks are coming in. The rooks are just going to roll down on both of these open lines. Um, 
So d4, c5 uh, would have been good. Instead, she goes rook c8. So now rook d1, rook d3. Another very good move by Hafu. Uh, XCC goes f4. He should have played king f1 again because after rook d8, the double stack, he can go king e2 and support everything. Um, the Olympiad, I heard something about it. I don't want to comment on the Olympiad yet, but I'll talk about it to on tomorrow's stream because I'm not completely informed yet. Um, so XCC goes f4, rook d8, rook g3. Rook d2, trade, uh, rook a1, rook c2, another fantastic move by Hafu, by the way, taking advantage of the um, of the, the, weak, the weak white rook and the inability to defend these pawn islands. So as you see these pawns on these little floating islands, you have no pawns to support each other. They're just split, so they're, they're on their own little island. Uh, is this the real Hikaru streaming? Um, yes, this is, this is the real Hikaru streaming. This is TSM Hikaru streaming. Not to be confused with GM Hikaru. Um, anyway, okay, so rook c2, a4 is played here, <laughs> rook takes c3, a takes b5, a b5, rook a7 check is played here by uh, by, by xqc. Um, uh, king d6, rook takes h7, b4, h3 played by xqc. What xqc should have played here um, is, would have been rook to b7. Now it's still losing, of course. But, but the thing is, now you can maybe try to run the pawn up the board. And one thing that's important in end games, especially, is that it's all about the pawns. Try to run the pawns up, the, up to the other end of the board. Um, so g4 played, takes, takes, king c6, or takes b3. And now after rook b3, Hafu is winning the game um, because she's just up a rook. After king g2, I think Hafu offered xqc a draw and they agreed to a draw. Um... Because Hafu could have played rook takes and made the made the ladder here. Just this, it's pretty clinical. You go here, 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 make a queen, king here, check again. Rook cuts the lanes. You can't go up. You go back, or sorry, you go back, and now you go check. Queen cuts the lanes. Queen supports the rook. King has to come back. You make the check. Hit the king. Queen supports the rook. Rook covers the square. King has to come back, and then you go rook d1. Um, queen supports the rook, and it covers all the squares on the second rank, and. Um, and it's uh, it's checkmate here. So for that reason, uh, uh, Hafu took the draw. She could have she could have won the game, uh, but it didn't matter because she won she won the match regardless. Uh, one and a half half. So very um very uh very very impressive performance by Hafu overall. There were a couple of little moments where I thought she was maybe a little bit too nervous in terms of the moves she played. Um, so she could maybe improve a little bit on the nerves overall, but I think, um, but I, I think in general, Hafu's play was was solid, sound, and um, it was solid, it was sound, no real major mistakes overall, and so it was a pretty clean victory for her. Um, in terms of XQC, I will say this: um, he has improved from the first Pog Champs, but what he's got to do is he needs to study because I'm not saying this jokingly. This is me being serious. So you guys can you can like. Clip this, tell him in a stream, whatever, whatever you want to do. But XQC, if he if he puts in a little bit of work, I do think there is a legitimate chance that he could win the Constellation Bracket. Um, I would say that, in my opinion, the top three players right now in the Constellation Bracket, um, I think the favorite is probably easy with Aces. And then I would say it's Scissors and XQC. I think those three guys are the clear favorites um, in the Bracket. So if he puts in some work, he takes a couple of lessons with me, gets it going before um, before uh, before he plays scissors. I think he has a legit chance. I really I really do. He's got very good instincts. Um, he wants to stream other games with more viewers. He's top five streamer right now. He knows he's got to ride his wave. Uh, I mean, he's been a top five streamer for the last like six months at least. Um, and I'm not saying he's got to. I'm not saying he's got to go cool Hafu and do a 24 hour chess stream. But I think if he put in like two to three hours before his match against uh, scissors. He has a legit chance to win that match. And if he wins that match, there's a good chance he could go all the way and, and win the Constellation Bracket. Um, all right, so I'm going to pop this up, you guys. So let me make this a little bit bigger uh, for, for now. So here is what we have. Um, or wait, I guess, I guess I can't. Whatever, this is just how it is. Um, let me move my cam just so you guys see what's going on. Okay, so here is the Constellation Bracket. I think Is it clear enough? Can you guys see it or not? Can you guys see it or not? I mean, I can try to make this bigger, I guess. Let me go. Okay, sorry. There we go. Um, okay, there we go. No, okay. Um, let me um, make. Let me make it. Let me make it one. Uh, one bit smaller. 
Okay, whatever. I'll just make my cam smaller then. Okay, so I think you guys can see this. Um, so just temporarily, I'll make myself smaller. Um, you guys see it, right? I, I know it's blurry, but you guys see it, right? I, I know it's blurry, but whatever. whatever. I, it's blurry because I'm enlarging it. Whatever. What can I say? But you guys see who's playing. I, I, know, I know it's bad. I get it. But whatever. That's life. Minecraft stream. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So you have a uh, championship bracket is up top and you're right. I should actually, you're right. I should put myself in the middle. Okay. So here's what we have. You have Gripex playing as David Pac-Man in the championship bracket. Uh, why do I say everything twice as a Bond Cloud stream? Um, I say things twice because usually I have multiple thoughts and I just end up repeating. If you, now when, when we have, when Twitch, TwitchCon happens and when there's a, um, when there's like a fan meetup or whatever in LA or San Diego or wherever it is, um, you'll see that I'm not going to repeat myself twice, but I, I do it a lot um, online. Yeah, I'm the final boss, right? Okay, so you have Gripix 90 against David Pacman. So, um, so this is going to be a, a tough matchup. I think I think Gripix is the, is the favorite. I'm worried for David Pacman. He's had issues. What I would say is, I'll give you guys my my like the pro football like kind of just like the the real inner inside analysis, my breakdown of each match. Um, so I think what it comes down to for David Pacman is the following: He's got to have good preparation, good openings. If he has good sound openings, gets a good position. Um, he's got chances, but he's got to get something going. He's got to get the flow. He's got to get the uh, he's got to get the momentum at the start of the game in the opening phase. Uh, that's the that's the path to victory for David Pacman. For Gripex, the path to victory is a couple things. First of all, getting David Pacman low on the clock. David Pacman has a lot of trouble when he gets low on time. Secondly, when he gets into end games, Pacman also has had a lot of problems. Um, so for Gripex, I would say try to get out of the opening of the position. In the middle game, I think Gripex is better. In the end game, he's definitely better. So I would say that for Pacman, it's all about the opening. If he doesn't get the advantage in the opening, it's going to be an uphill battle. For Gripex, get out of the opening, and then I think he's the clear favorite in all the other phases of the game. Um, okay, so that's that group. Now, we don't have the matchups for Wagamom or Hathor Julius yet because Group C plays tomorrow. They're... Um, and Group C is very unclear right now. There could be three people can qualify. Um, TF Blade could qualify. Zex, TSM Zexor could qualify. Or Dog Dog could qualify. So it's a very messy group. And um, uh, it's not clear which two out of three will qualify. So that's why there's no opponent slated yet for Wagamama or Hathor Julius. Um, now let's look at the other matchup in the championship bracket. Hafu against Forsen. This is a very big time matchup. Um... I don't know. I mean, ha Hafu is certainly the favorite based on the amount of time she's put in. What I would say is that um, Forsen is very formidable. He's been preparing on his own, coming up with a lot of original sort of opening gambit ideas. So I think that it's it's. I, I would say it's Hafu's the favorite, but if Forsen gets his uh gets his his um gets his uh get if Forsen gets his 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 sort of his opening gambit, his romantic chest rolling. He's got chances to, to take out Hafu. Okay, so um, so Force and Hafu. Oh, by the way, there is a chance that Dog Dog could qualify here. Speaking of romance, so if Dog Dog qualifies here and he beats Hathor Julius, he could play its Hafu in the semifinal. Um, so that would that would be I think Hafu and Dog Dog I believe are engaged. They're basically married. Um, and uh. You know, I will talk about that. Like when that happens in real life, there are some very strong chess couples. Um, like, uh, like there are a couple grandmasters and women grandmasters and and so forth who are married. Um, and and when they and um and, and so and 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 so um and so I leaked the script right. And so if they play, what I would say is generally speaking, um, you know, you just got to go in and focus on the game. Honestly, I'm not married, you guys. Um. I'm not married, uh, but yeah, I, what I would say is that uh, is it's unpleasant, but you just got to go in full strength. No, no, no mercy whatsoever. Um, so, so that's what I would say. Um, all right. Um, so, all right. Um, so yeah, no, no mercy. Like, I mean, I'm just saying. Um, but yeah. But what I would say is, I mean, of course, I, I've never had that situation myself. But what I would say is I have played against family members. So I have played against my stepfather and I have played against my brother. And I can honestly say from having done that, it's been very, it's very, very hard. So I can only imagine if you're playing against um, 
playing against a significant other, that would be um that would be very unpleasant. So yeah. Um <laughs> all right, you guys. Let's let's chill out, relax. So so yeah, you just you just gotta go in and play. Of course they they try to avoid it, but but yeah. Um is my brother a GM? No, he's a master, but I, I played him in a in a competitive tournament for in the tournament featuring the top ten jun top eight actually, sorry, junior chess players in all of America under the age of twenty. I played him, I beat him in our game and um i can say like for the next like two days um it was not it was not a good atmosphere so uh it was it was not fun no my brother does not play anymore he's a he's a he's a big shot at jp morgan chase these days so he doesn't play shots anymore um so all right so that's the uh that that's the bracket what happens when you play pokemon how do you handle it very funny you guys very funny 